done that is I went down through these loops here okay and then I have two pieces of rope here and I'm going to tie those into a knot both together just wrap them around and tie a knot a single knot like that and you can kind of tuck that or tie it and do all kinds of stuff if you want but you do have a loop coming off your drum then and it's going through these loops now, this is a mud cloth strap. Um, it's long enough. Usually I recommend 13 to 15 feet, depending if you want to be how low you want your drum to hang. But you can also use webbing. This is just um, black webbing. This is two inch. You can use one inch. You can make your own strap out of cloth or whatever. So there's many options on what to use for strapping material. But now I've run the strap through that loop there. And then you run it through so that these two ends, you line up the ends of the rope, and you make a knot just like I did with that rope at the end of it. So then we have a knot tied at the bottom. And we have our strap through the loop there. You take that bottom knot and you tuck it underneath here. So now you have this position. Then, depending on how tall you are and where you want your drum to hang, you can wrap it through again. And sometimes that helps stability a little bit. Not really crucial, but I've, I've typically done that with mine and it seems to work pretty good. Um, you can also adjust that knot that we tied to make the, the length correct for you. And to test the length, you have to put it on. And this is the part that can get confusing. As you go from this position here, you need to make a cross, right like that. And that's what's gonna be on, on your back. So when you stick your head through here, it's all clear like that. Sometimes people get confused and you make, a, you make the cross like this, and then you have this cross down here at the bottom. That's not gonna work. So you have to make it kind of from the top, and your head comes through here, and your arms come through there. So then when you look at the back, you have the cross here, no cross in front, that's where your drum hangs. Okay, so there we go. Kind of straighten it out. And then you're standing with your djembe, and it's pretty good setup. Now, do you have to use this piece of rope attached to the drum? No. This you could have run right through the ropes on the drum. If you have a drum, that has your skin folded over your ropes, it can make it a little more difficult to attach the rope through there because the skin is covering it. So one solution is you can still use the, the rope like I did with this drum. And instead of putting it through the top loops of the, of the ring up there, you can put it through the ropes that are used for tuning. And generally speaking, I haven't noticed any problems doing it like that and, and getting a loop tied and, and having a loop come off those ropes and put your strap through. I've also not really noticed any problem with taking your strap and putting it right through, right through the ropes like that. So if you don't want to use the piece of rope and you just want to tuck your strap right through there, this is a shorter strap just for seated playing. You tie it around your waist and sit and play. If it was longer, we could do like we did with that. But you see what I'm saying, just by putting it through those ropes or attaching a separate rope, that doesn't matter. It's, it's kind of nice to have the piece of rope on there. Might be a little different feel, might pull on the ropes a little differently. Those are options. So the. The drum's gonna have a piece of rope that was just tied on like that. So you take it apart, you got your piece of rope. Here the drum is just looped together, up and down, up and down. There is no twisting, hasn't been done. So this is kind of a common way that you'll see a drum if you buy it and there isn't any tuning. So you have to pick which two ropes am I gonna twist together, okay? Basically any two ropes you twist together, it's gonna work. 
but I like to choose two ropes that are further apart than closer together because you'll get more tune out of, out of your work. So I'm going to go ahead and say from here, I'm going to pick these two ropes to start with. And so when I take the drum, typically I'm going to set it on the ground, you know, and, and I'm going to sit kind of on the ground working on it. So we want to get our pattern. Maybe to show the pattern, I, I won't put it on the ground just so you can see clearly. This is the important part is how do I tie the rope in here to twist it together to make it tighter. So I take this piece of rope and I find out which two ropes I'm going to use and I go around one and I pull the slack through then I go under the other two. Now this is one way to do it. This is the way I do it because I like when I, when I pull the rope, it just stays in there. It doesn't want to flip back. Another way that a lot of folks do it is you go under two first. Okay? So you take the rope and you go under both ropes. Okay? So if you've gone under both ropes and then you go over a rope like that, this is going to work as well. I've gone under two and I came around here and I go under this one and then if I pull that, give it a pull, it's going to flip it. When it's flipped, you can see that it's, it's tuning the drum, it's twisting these ropes together and that's it. All right. So when you start to do this method of going under both, Okay, and then over one like that. It works pretty easy, you know. If you, if you can pull that rope, a lot of times you sit on the ground, sit completely on the ground, put your feet here, use a stick, take the stick, and tie the rope to the stick so that you can really get some leverage, really pull on it, because sometimes it can get more and more difficult to pull it. So the drum, this drum is pretty tight, but these ropes aren't that tight. This is a smaller djembe. If we're working with something larger and we start to get to where, we start to get where it's much tighter, say this drum, that's really tight. So now when we want to tighten this drum, it's going to be harder to pull the ropes together because we have a high tension and when we go to tie the pattern in there and we want to flip those ropes together, it's going to be harder to pull. So if that's the case, like I said, you put the drum on the ground, you sit on the ground and you pull with your feet against the rope, you really, it really does get more difficult. And you can do it. It's, it's not that difficult. Um, even if you think you're not strong enough, like I said, with the leverage and having your feet against the drum and pulling on it, you have a better time of, of getting it done. I was showing you one other way that I, I like to do it where I don't go under both first, I go over both first. So you got your rope and you see the, your, your next two ropes that you want to pull, you go over it, run the rope up through the middle. So I've hooked that second one. Then I go under both. Okay. This is the same pattern, it's just in reverse. Because here you see there's, it's going under both and then it's hooking just one. So it is the same pattern as this, it's just going to flip the rope in the opposite way. So like on this one right here, you see this rope came over the top and this one's going under. Now what's going to happen is this rope's going to go under, this rope's going to come over the top. So in order to do that, you have to make sure that the, the pattern is tied in this manner. There's two ropes. It comes over, it hooks this one, comes up the middle, and it comes under both of them. You then have to slide this rope under that rope. It's an important step. And slide it down, because you, you don't want to tie your twist and have them go up on an angle like that. You want to keep it low towards, towards the base of the djembe. And when you pull it, it's going to flip the ropes like that. See now, with this one, this rope's coming over the top and that's going over the bottom, whereas this is going the bottom and that's going to the top. That does not matter. Either of those techniques I just showed you is going to tune your djembe. Okay? Um, 
sometimes you just get used to doing it one way you like one way better than another for me I like this way because when you pull it it never wants to go back um, the other way when you go under both first if the drums very tight and you're doing this method it's going to be a little bit finicky when you pull it to stay in place and there is a solution to that the solution would be you have to pull it from you, you put it under the next two right away so when you, when you have it under the next two and you pull it that'll hold it in place but to me I don't actually prefer that but you know and this, this drums getting so tight I don't want to keep tuning it either that's important too check the sound of the drum that's very tight you can hear it you can you can push on the skin see how much give it has and if you go one twist too many and your drums already tight the skin can easily split it definitely can happen um, and, and sometimes it doesn't happen right then either you tune your drum you think you're all good you take it out somewhere and, and the next thing you know it's broken so it's something to just ease into and, and listen to the sound and not choke the sound that's another problem if you tighten your djembe really tight um, you'll be hitting the slaps and tones and it'll sound like like you're like it's choked like your hand is on here if the sound starts getting like that you know it's, it's just too tight so you definitely need to get an ear I'd say this djembe is, is got a nice tune on it sounds pretty good so that's kind of not super super tight but not loose either that's that's a nice tune this could use a few twists see that's a little, a little low so we would put some twists in there bring that up closer to closer to there